Hi everyone, and welcome to our News from the Real World podcast, episode three. Eleanor, why don't you kick us off with tattoos? Tattoos. All right, so this article is called NFL Players Association Freaks Out About Tattoo Copyrights, and it's from techdirt.com. It's an editor pick. Um, so there's some controversy going on in the NFL. Face tattoos! <laughs> about uh, tattoos that players have and you know who owns the copyright to those tattoos. Is it the player themselves or is it the tattoo artist? And if that player's image is going to be represented in like branding or other media, um, who has the copyright to, to that tattoo? And basically the NFL Players Association has said, um, well... You know, we're not going to be responsible for it. You, if you're getting a tattoo, you have to like get a release form yeah. from your tattoo artist saying that, that it's yours, and you know, or you have to sign a form saying you know we're not going to be responsible. So, what do you guys think about this? <laughs> Copyright gone too far? Oh my god! Well, the first, I mean, the first thing that I found most interesting about this, I never actually had thought about the question of copyright ownership as far as tattoos mm. go. I think that's a really cool concept. I want to empower artists as much as possible, but at the same time, I think their like copyright is woefully problematic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't, you know, I'm stuck there. I don't know what to do. But at the same time, you know, I, I feel like these are commission pieces that are specifically for a person. Right. So I don't know. That's that is a really I mean, good question. The other thing is, there's the point of copyright is that you want to be able to control the access to your product. Right. So that right. you yes. But like, if, if you're putting an artwork on another and, person, and the, and get it the, doesn't the rewards right, 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 for that right. access. It doesn't. It it almost seems like the point of copyright would then give you like partial like control over what that person is able to do, which I think is kind of the point of this article is that you know NFL players are in the spotlight so much. They're on TV. They're in magazines, and it does. Be just because they chose to go to a particular tattoo artist and get, you know, a face on their ankle, does that really... I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's that's, like... That's a really cool point. That's like an, an extra step, because I think part of the... One aspect of the article was the fact that um, if you, you know, if you do not get a waiver signed, technically the artist, like, there's a strong legal standing for that artist to own the artwork, regardless of right. where it is painted. Right, because copyright is for items that will last and skin lasts, and thus right. your skin is a right. canvas that can be copyrighted. Yeah. So, but but that I like that idea of like the control aspect of it. So an artist could not control like they couldn't tell you to cover something up, right? Because then that's like some sort of weird other yeah. infringement of personal rights. Right. So I don't know. That's kind it's, of it's, I like I like the idea behind it. I just th I think the NFL is probably right to be doing this because mm -hmm. why not indemnify themselves of any mm -hmm. possible trouble in the future? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I just like tattoo artists. Really, would you go after these people for this purpose? The the one well, situation think, that they the talked about the was tattoo artists are the ones they're going to go after the NFL. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Because I, mean, I mean, it's kind of the example that the article gave was this tattoo artist who did the tattoo of um, Mike Tyson's. Mike Tyson's. Right. And then the hangover. And then yeah. the hangover. So that, but that's such a different scenario. Well, I don't know if it's that different. It's actually kind of interesting. So that's a parody, right? Mm. I think that is completely fair use because it is a parody, in my, my opinion. You guys look skeptical about that. Anyway. Did they use the actual Mike Tyson face tattoo for the hangover? I just don't know. I don't know was either. Was it the actual I don't, tattoo? I don't know how close it was. Yeah. I think regardless, that was clearly meant right, it as was a really meant to be that. apparent. Yeah, so that's let that case to me is like open and shut. But let's say your your likeness is used in a video game representation. That's a good question. Because that artist maybe does deserve something. Well but I think the other point of it is because the hangover used the tattoo to publicize their product. Like that, what it was? That was all you saw on right. the poster was like the tattoo that was supposed to make you think Mike Tyson's face. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was you know immediate. That they were banking on that artwork, whereas some using somebody's you know tattoo and they because they're in a video game and they have a tattoo on their arm, you're not promoting anything with that tattoo. It's just mm -hmm. they have a tattoo there. It's just 
that person yeah. is in my game, I'm going to put like yeah. that's that, a, I think that's it's a fair thing. that's a fair argument. I, I had thought about the promotional usage of that image. I was just thinking about it in the context of the right. film itself, but I think I think right. you're right. So Whenever you get a tattoo, so I don't really get a release form. Sign. Get a release form. <laughs> you it's, never know when you'll get famous. Yeah, yeah. you might be an F NFL yeah. player. So you probably won't be though. I've seen you're you. You're in theater. You probably won't be an NFL player. <laughs> I've seen you throw a ball. It wasn't good. <laughs> so a teacher. Moving on. A teacher. <laughs> 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 okay. So my next article by. Uh, in small spaces, theater makers are telling big stories. Uh, and this is by Mark Blankenship. So, um, this is about, well, there are events happening within this month, which is like, on September 5th, there's uh, All the Face in the Moon by Mike Daisy, mm -hmm. which is a um, very famous theater maker, uh, starting in, well, they're gonna perform, they, they are performed in public, Public theater in New York, and it's uh, twenty nine different monologues. Mm -hmm. So he's the monologue piece. Mm -hmm. He's just gonna like talk about things and different things. Twenty nine different things all the way forty four hours <laughs> for forty four hours. Also, this Sunday, is it this, this Sunday, September twenty ninth? Yep. Yeah. Uh, there are also uh, Richard the second. Uh, by David Iris and Ren Bourne uh, from the Utah Shakespeare Festival present Shakespeare's 10th play English uh, history cycle in chronological order. So, huge mm. work, all huge works coming up. Really long. And really long. <laughs> Sitting there for a long time. Yeah. Also, and what do you think about that? Yeah. Well, the best sentence in this article says it was talking about that's a long time for somebody to sit there. I mean, uh, they're not watching all ten Shakespeare plays in you know three days. It's stretched over their season, but that that's a long time for somebody to sit there, and it's a lot for them to absorb. Like twenty nine days of one person telling a story <coughs> is a lot. And the point that this one sentence said was, in the age of like binge watching Netflix, people are used to sitting down and watching, watching something, something. Mm -hmm. and you know spending hours sitting there watching the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I was, I don't, I understand kind of why he said that, because like in my head it kind of makes sense, but then. It's not at all the same. It's not at all the same thing. It's not the same thing. It's totally different. It's different in theater. I like Why? Why is it different? Because I don't need to have my pants on to watch <laughs> It's true. It's true. And I can do that all day long. Yeah. I love Netflix. Yeah. I also love marathon theater. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've been in I've been in shows and that, that's probably more fun than sitting in the audience, I guess, but maybe not. But, you it's, know, it's almost the opposite to that solitary experience of sitting in your underwear yeah. watching all the Breaking Bad in advance of the finale on yeah. Sunday because you're it's it's the community. Of By the, the way, can we just talk about Breaking Bad? <laughs> I don't want to derail things. Oh my god, it's no, so good. I, do, I do okay. not watch Breaking Bad. Don't spoil it. Anyway, so it's the <laughs> marathon theater is the community event versus the individualistic solo yeah. event. Exactly. Yeah, it's like coming together to share something for a long time as a group of people and to really witness something taking place. That, I think, is the most valuable thing about those experiences is, if, you know, even if you, you don't necessarily have to talk to anybody, mm. but, you know, sometimes they do have really cool things, like you might have a meal in the middle mm -hmm. where you like, actually kind of hang out with other yeah. people watching the show. Yeah. That stuff is wonderful, and I actually highly encourage that if you're going to do an event like that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, just sitting there, you, you can see the same person sitting across from you for six mm -hmm. hours, you know, you see their re reaction to the to the show. You know, it's that's really kind of powerful. I love and it. Interesting thing about it. And also, there's a question like, what's the purpose of doing this? Yeah. And the answer is because that's what the theater is for. I I think yes. that's fair. You know, Ooh, right? To yes. bring people together in a public space. Yeah, and to I draw more attention from people. Mm. Yeah. yeah, great way to end. Article. <laughs> That's what theater's for, everyone. That's what theater's for. <laughs> so, moving on, Eleanor, tell us about construction. Okay, great. So, this is our last article. Women, 
one of my favorite topics. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay, I'm so making safety of women in the construction industry a priority. Uh, by Jamie Friedlander from the Occupational Health and Safety blog, an editor pick this week. Um, so basically what has happened is the Occupational Health and Safety Association has signed an alliance with the National Association of Women in Construction to put in place kind of like a variety of measures that are going to address some of the unique challenges that women face in the construction industry. So this is things like um, a lot of the safety equipment is just made for men and like men's physical shape and so it's if women put it on it doesn't really protect them in the same way and things also things like some of the tools and the equipment designed for like a male's upper body strength so if women use it they have to exert more force and that puts them at risk so yeah they're going to put in place a bunch of things to to help make women more safe at the workplace not very controversial, yeah. I would have thought. <laughs> I think that's pretty useful. <laughs> that's pretty good stuff. Yeah. I mean, like, the, is, it's interesting to me, because something like that, that last bit about, you know, making machines that, are, that can be used by a variety of people, uh -huh. you know, and, and actually also the, the size of personal safety equipment. Uh -huh. I mean, construction workers have come in every shape and size for as long as there have been construction workers, regardless of whether they're men or women. So I find it shocking that this has not been figured out until now, in yeah, some ways, yeah. because I'm, I'm sure there have been some, some you know, very vast differences in sizes <laughs> among people. I mean, one of the other things was, it sounded like a lot of these workplaces didn't even have female bathrooms. Right. Yeah. And so women, yeah. women, yeah. women wouldn't go to the toilet as much at work because they didn't want to go in the guys' bathroom and you know that puts you that's bad for you. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Clearly. I mean, I'm just like that's so appalling. Yeah. I agree. It was kind of shocking to read this, and yet I'm kind of, I can kind of understand where it's coming from because uh -huh. you know if if the bathroom is not accommodating to you, I can see not wanting to use it. <laughs> totally. And thus you don't drink as much water during the day, so you yeah. don't have to use yeah. the bathroom, and then yeah. that leads to all kinds of problems. So. Yeah. Yeah. And on that note, <laughs> thank you, Osha. <laughs> and on that note, thanks everyone for listening. If you want to check us out on Twitter, you can check us out at hashtag NFTRW. Um, I don't know. That's all for now, folks. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs>